Hello friends, uh, I welcome all of you uh, to our Unplugged series and in this series today we are going to discuss about uh, rotator cuff and uh, we are going to discuss one muscle of rotator cuff that is subscapularis. Normally it is known as forgotten muscle but now it is no longer for, forgotten. So subscapularis tears are no longer forgotten because of advancement of the techniques and the and I will be discussing uh, the anatomy. I am Dr. Sandeep Madan and uh, I will be discussing the anatomy of rotator cuff. See, when we look at the rotator cuff, we know that the tendons of these four muscles are actually merging with the capsule of the shoulder joint. Thereby, they strengthen the shoulder joint. That is why they are known as musculotendinous cuff or rotator cuff. Now, let us see what are the components of rotator cuff muscles. We have this muscle that is supraspinatus the supraspinatus is taking origin from the supraspinous fossa and then it is attached on the upper facet of greater tubercle of the humerus and if we look at the infraspinatus muscle this is taking origin from the infraspinous fossa again it is approaching the greater tubercle but on the middle facet and in line that is we have teres minor muscle it is taking origin from the dorsal aspect of the lateral border of the scapula and then it is going to insert on the lower facet of the greater tubercle. These three muscles are actually attached on the greater tubercle of the humerus. And when we look from the anterior aspect, we have the subscapularis muscle, which is taking origin from the subscapular part, that is the ventral part of the scapula. And then it goes and insert on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. So basically three muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor are attached on the greater tubercle. Subscapularis is attached on the lesser tubercle and overall they are surrounded surrounding the shoulder joint and they are merged with the capsule of the shoulder joint and uh, if we look at the actions of these muscles this is where we can see the ventral aspect this is the subscapularis muscle and here we can see the dorsal aspect the supraspinatus infraspinatus and teres minor now let us look at the action of these individual muscles when you look at the action of the subscapularis when it contracts it will bring which movement it will bring the medial rotation it will bring the inward rotation or the medial rotation now if you look at the action of infraspinatus and teres minor they are exerting the pull from behind so they will make the humerus rotate outward that is what is known as lateral rotation because of the rotation they are known as rotator cuff and we must always remember there is one muscle which is a component of rotator cuff but it is not a rotator of the uh, humerus what is that is supraspinatus when it contracts it brings about the abduction this is basically doing the abduction initiator of the abduction that is 0 to 15 degree now i would request sumer sir to discuss the radiology and how this picture looks on the mri now thank you dr sandeep for an excellent discussion on the sub subscapular tendon and why it is so important to know the rotator cuff now as a radiologist i want to point out only a few things to an undergraduate number one is that today mri is the investigation of choice for rotator cuff tear that is very very important to understand today mri is able to show us the tendons that we want to see beautifully and anytime you have to look for tendon ligament soft tissue cartilage mri is definitely superior to ct scan so i hope you are clear with this Second thing you need to know is that supraspinatus is the one which is commonly torn out of the rotator cuff. That is the most commonly torn tendon there. And it is that supraspinatus tendinous injury can also be seen on an ultrasound. So often in today's world, in most of the sports clinics, ultrasound is taken as the first thing that you do in a suspected rotator cuff tear. While if they say investigation of choice, it is MRI. So that is why I see many undergraduates getting confused. Second thing I want you to, I just would show you some MR images to show you how it looks like on a real MRI scan. I have taken some MRI from the workstation so that you can follow it up. I, let me show you the images. So we are going from above downwards. And how do we know we are above? You can see the acromioclavicular joint. You can see the acromioclavicular joint just below the AC joint. C can you see this muscle belly and can you see how the it is forming the tendon and inserting onto the superior facet of the greater tubercle and that is the classic place where the supraspinatus in, is inserts this is how it looks like on an axial plane this is how you see supraspinatus on a axial plane as we go down as we go down so this is your scapular blade that you saw on the anatomy and anterior to it you see the subscapularis and you can see how the tendon is forming inserting onto the inserting onto the lesser tubercle 
and let me show you this is where you saw the long head of biceps even in the anatomy this is the insertion of the subscapularis and that was the topic for the day behind the scapular blade you can see the infraspinatus you can see the infraspinatus inserting onto the humerus are you able to understand this now so this is the axial plane but the ideal plane which you know most of the time where we look at the rotator cuff is the coronal so let me show you the coronal anatomy here just to make sure that you understand so we again look at the same landmark there that is your ac joint and below it you can see this is the area of the supraspinatus and you can see how it converts and you can see the intermediate signal in the muscle but while we go towards the tendon it becomes darker and tendon is something which joins the muscle to the bone so that is the dark area that you see here so i'm sure you can see that you know you might you know as an undergrad probably you might have heard about something called as impingement where the supraspinatus tendon gets impinged either by the osteoarthritis at this joint or an abnormal shape or abnormal angle of the acromion so this would all become relevant when you become a postgraduate but look at the course of the supraspinatus that is one of the most important muscles to consider and you can see this is your glenoid this is your humeral head and you can see these triangles here this is the superior labrum and inferiorly you see the inferior labrum and all this becomes important when you talk about superior labrum is closely associated with the long head of biceps origin when you talk about slap tears you talk about superior labrum tear that is slap tear when you talk about bankart's lesion in recurrent shoulder dislocation that is where inferior antero inferior labrum becomes more important now let me come directly to the point of contention of this session this is your coracoid process this is your coracoid process and i want you to see just below the coracoid process you will be able to see a muscle a tendon going towards the humerus that is your subscapularis so that subscapularis that we were talking about is the important tendon here because often you heard in the anatomy discussion also it was earlier called as the forgotten tendon and while we go backwards from the supraspinatus you can see the infraspinatus and you can see the teres minor there that is the how the anatomy is seen on a mr image remember the muscles are giving us an intermediate signal tendon and ligament will appear dark on both t1 and t2 weighted image and there is something called as fluid sensitive image like a t2 weighted image is a fluid sensitive image so if there is a tear in the tendon that area will appear bright because of presence of fluid there so on a t2 weighted image or on a fat suppressed fluid sensitive image we will be able to see those tendinous tears better on mri investigation of choice for and rotator cuff tear is mr because i want to add a line here when we talk about surgical repair of the tendon so not only the presence of tear becomes important we also need to know the muscle bulk you can see how this is this is the bulk of the supraspinatus so the success of the repair of the tendinous tear also depends on how much bulk is present in the muscle if it is totally atrophied the results will not be that good as compared to if you have a normal bulk which we comment on a mr the role of a mri is not only to talk about the tear if it is a partial tear or a complete tear we also have to tell us tell the you know referring physician if there is how much bulk what is the muscle bulk in the supraspinatus we also talk about the acromion shape osteoarthritis in the ac joint in the glenohumeral joint we also talk about the labrum if there is a superior labral tear or inferior labral tear or if there is any you know sequelae to the dislocation that you see in the humeral head like we talked about the bankart lesion in the the anterior inferior labrum and the hill sack lesion in the posterior superior part of the the humeral head so that is like the role of mr in a nutshell and these are the common indications why a patient would come to us in for mri patient would come to us for suspected rotator cuff tear suspected uh, you know um, sequelae to shoulder dislocation a classic or frozen shoulder is again one of the classic indications why a patient would come to us for mri so i hope you enjoy this integrated session that we have conducted here and our goal here is to give you the idea of how medicine integrates how basic sciences and clinical sciences they become one when we start to integrate we start to understand better we start to enjoy learning medicine that is our goal and i hope you enjoy this session do follow us on damsedi channel on youtube and damsedi page on facebook for more such videos thank you